look in the eyes of my brother Without shedding a tear for my brother I really want to try for my brother Yo! Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to another episode of the Informally Honest Podcast. We are four brothers, different mothers, and last and daddies last time I checked. Right from Gary, Indiana, neighborhood of Miller. And in case you ain't noticed, we got a fifth person on today. <laughs> right? We want to welcome the obviously gorgeous Nautica Taylor. That's Nautica, how you feeling today? Feeling great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Nautica's here because uh, we'll talk to her a lot a little later, but she's here to promote a project and we're glad to have her as our first official guest on the Inform the Honest podcast. And so, yo, if, you, uh, if you're joining us for the first time, we, uh, we're just four brothers from Gary who have had a friendship lasting over 20 years and we like to have conversations that challenge one another, make each other laugh and, you know, inspire hopefully others to um, engage with the close people in your life and have conversations rooted in being forthright, vulnerable, and most of all, honest. Before we get started, y'all, let's have a little check-in. Nautica, what's something great that happened to you this week, and what's something that you were challenged with? Something great that happened? Huh? Oh, man. So much. <laughs> Let me start. Okay, come on. Uh, I, I work at a bar um, on weekends, so that obviously got shut down because of COVID. Right. So I get a little free time. That's one great thing that happened. Uh, okay. If you, if you look at it in a positive way, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, personal personal time to, you know, compensate. Absolutely. Get Absolutely. some self-care in there. Word. Okay. And what's something you were challenged with this week? Is it also that your bar got closed down? <laughs> what? Say, ask me that again. Say, what's, what's something that you were challenged with this week? Absolutely nothing. Okay. Time, time, time. Time is always a challenging thing. Trying to fit everything in in one day. You have so much to do, so many appointments. So that's a very challenging thing that I had this week. It's hard being a big deal. I don't know that life, but it sounds like. Well, I'm not a big deal, but (laughs) I have so much going on and there's so many things I want to do that, you know, you can't do everything in one day. You want to, but you can't, you know. So that's that's very real. What about you, Josh? Bill? What is something exciting that happened to you? I appreciate that. Come on, you better you better pick up that rebound. <laughs> <laughs> talk, um, talk to us. This, this week this week was pretty uh, down for me. Uh, I I recently uh, had um, I had some shows going on, and so now uh, now that the performance season is kind of in its low, uh, I'm a dancer and a choreographer. Uh, cool. and so uh and so we uh we recently had a fundraiser that went well to my knowledge and uh getting ready for um a video project coming up in december uh that'll premiere in february and so that's yeah dope. uh besides that uh just trying to get this body to feel like something getting getting older and uh don't i ain't as limber as i once was listen getting so, older is a blessing Okay, a lot of people don't even make it to 12 years old. This is true. Oh, this aging is, true. is a beautiful thing. That does not remove the fact that my back feels like other dog <laughs> shit. And so... Tell me about it. <laughs> I'm like, stop, I'm out of breath. I'm like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, what's happening with you, sir? Yo. Uh, so, one of the things I'm, I'm grateful for, man, this week is, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I've been involved in this lawsuit for, for like three and a half years and it finally got dismissed this week. So I don't have to pay the 250 grand that they were trying to sue me for. Oh, uh, remind me, what is this for? It was this car situation, this car, they call it a car accident, but our cars didn't touch. So I call it a car. Wow. Um, oh, car? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they called it an, an accident, but if our cars don't touch in any way, shape, or form, then that's not what I consider it to be. <laughs> uh, was it, was there any accident at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their car, their car hit somebody else's and almost hit somebody's house, but they said that I like pulled in front of them. To like, but uh, I mean, it's just it's just plain old not true. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm glad you got away from that, man. That's major. Yo, and the real blessing, man, is that speaking of blessing, the real blessing is. I somebody who I didn't even know who happened to be there at the time. Mm-hmm. So it's like I was pulling out of a out of a uh, a state park, mm-hmm. which all the the folks on this 
podcast you fellas know that is like makes sense for me. Yes. Yeah, a weekend thing. Um, she stayed so you know, everybody's like crowding over to see what's going on. The cops are coming. It's becoming like this big dramatic thing um, that happens when you see somebody's car flip over or whatever. Wow. Now, this lovely woman named Jennifer Tony, mm. who's who said she was the only one there. I didn't know her. She came up to myself and my sister and stayed until the last minute to make sure she could talk to the cop and say, hey, I really I don't know this gentleman, but I hear in the story that's not true. I want to like clear the air. So she Yo, shout out to her. When she blessed me and three and a half years later, they were still like bothering her to, about the case. I was feeling bad because I thought it was over. And then they tried to sue me again for the second time that they lost. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yo, she got, they tried to sue you or your insurance? They tried to sue me because they, they tried they tried to, they tried the insurance first time and then wow they, they got, got time. Them. Yeah, so they pulled in clearly the party and the third party was like, yo, that's this is this is not adding up. So then they tried to come at me. Um, so three and a half, almost four years later, I didn't travel the world and everything. And uh <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the point is, I was able to still live my life and do the things I wanted, and, I, and you know, it, it all ended well, seemingly. So, yeah. so, so they blessings got on blessings, man. But like nothing, nothing out of my pocket personally. So, yo, say her, say say her name one more time for the uh, for the airwaves, so we can show this gratitude, right? This lovely woman who helped save my situation. Her name is Jennifer. Her name is Doctor. Let me give her her, her credibility. Let Come me- on. Yeah, let me show you. Know, she, worked, she worked hard for that title. Uh, her, her name is Dr. Jennifer Tony. She was going through some health issues recently, which is why I felt bad that even three and a half years later, we're still bothering her about this whole situation. Hmm. But, um, you know, she, she was in my corner the whole time without me even asking. So I'm entirely, entirely grateful to you. Word. Amazing. I'll never hear this, but if, if you do. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it again after I text her and talk to her already. I want to say it again one last time. I'm internally grateful, though. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Marco, you're back. How you feeling, sir? Yeah. Sorry about that little technical difficulty. But it happens. I'm good, though. Um, like not a could, I've been off work um, because of COVID. Somebody at my job um actually tested positive so yeah you were saying that that, yeah i had to go through the rigmarole of getting tested now because uh now it's kind of hard like i I got tested three weeks ago and it was pretty easy but now i guess it's spiking or whatever Mm -hmm. so uh, yeah it is what it is man but besides that just loving this beautiful day happy to see it man glad you in good health aj you got your mic back on now no, okay. <laughs> well, I'll uh, say really quick that I love the word rigmarole. <laughs> <laughs> I want to use that word more that often. That came out the depths of my, my head, man. I, I haven't used that in a while. <laughs> uh, so with Nautica here, um, first of all, can you please tell us about this project that, uh, that you're promoting? Yeah, so this project is basically like a short film documentary mm-hmm. about Black Lives Matter. Can of course say too much, but it's a very powerful educational short movie. Okay. About how the lives of black people are affected every day. Hmm. With just simple situations like being in a parking lot or going to the store, something can go left in just like one second. So this movie is basically based around how black people live on a daily basis. It's very powerful, Um, very educational. I definitely um, encourage parents to have their kids watch this movie Mm. because it tells you a lot about what black people also created. What, um, what's the right term? What's the right term? Um, Invented. Okay. Black people invented so many things that a lot of people don't know. And they don't teach it in school. Right. They don't don't teach it in school. You know what I mean? Just Mm -hmm. like how they don't teach you in school. Only for one month. Yeah. Like there's. Barely. (laughs) Barely. And that one month is really just like a title. 
Black, like, you know, what, February is like... Yeah, February, Black History Month. Black History Month. But what is really taught? Nothing. Nothing at all. It's just like a title. It show a few pictures on TV or maybe some posters, but that's it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm Eritrean. Um, it's oh, if you don't know. Um, mm-hmm. But I grew up in Germany. Okay. Would you say, Eric? Sorry, I said, I said I didn't hear what you said. I didn't catch that you said you're what? Oh, look, so I'm Eritrean. It's East Africa. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I grew up in Germany most of my life. I lived in Germany for like about 22 years or so. And then Word, I okay. here. And I have a 20 year old son. So now when I was in Germany, I never really was, I never really knew about that Black Lives Matter because, you know, it's always been there, but it was kind of like hidden, but I was still there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Until we got mm-hmm. now, now it's like in the open, like really in the open with the president we have now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, but now that I, you know, I have my 20 year old son. So now I'm like really, have my eyes open about mm-hmm. things because now he drives. You know what I mean? He he goes skating all the time. So now I'm like, wait a minute. I gotta watch out for that too because whatever affects him affects me. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so this movie is just it's crazy. You guys really have to watch it. It's it's very powerful. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Now uh correct me if I'm wrong, the name of the movie is We Built This. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Uh, and so uh, can you tell us where it can be found, when it's coming out? So because of COVID, uh, it was pushed to so the premiere to the public will be around February. Okay. We don't have an exact date yet, but it's going to be around February. And I'm, sh- I'm sure the, uh, Mr. Love will announce that soon. Um, we have a premiere for the cast only. And it's going to be playing at the Harper Theater in, at, in Hyde Park. Okay, yes. Harper, uh, 53rd of Harper. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I love Hyde Park, by the way. Hyde Park is such a... It's like all the powerful... Not powerful, but if you come from where I'm come from and you like... Or if you just look at Chicago, Chicago has so mm-hmm. many different crazy parts. But Hyde yes, Park yes, is like one of my favorites because it's like... It's like a bougie kind of, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like a mixture it is. of New York and it is. Italy. It's just like, it's, I love it. Like yeah, it, it, it is one of those things where like, a, a, my bad, Marco. No, I was just going to say it's a, it's a nice combination of, of, I mean, it's mostly, I would say the black community, but it's a nice yeah. combination mm-hmm. of interest, like in the same area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it and mm-hmm. is like a prime location too. And this is yes, expensive. And and then one is is right next to University of Chicago, so you have that whole like college group that's coming in. Um, it's it's black gentrified, and so like mo- a lot of more well off black folks are uh, permeating the space, and so it's yeah. it's a uh, it's it's a beautiful area of town. Um, I, I'm definitely with you on that. And so uh, Harper Theater, uh, February. Keep your eyes out for We Built It. It's um it I I saw the music video for the song. Uh, was shared oh, with us, beautiful. yeah, and yeah, and and so re- really, really interested to see what comes of the entire project. I'm really, really curious, and um, by all means, keep an eye out for it, y'all. Um, Shout what got Mr. Love? <laughs> so, may I ask what your uh, what your role is? It what so your role I, is in it? Yeah, so I'm a cardiologist, actually, cardio surgeon. Um, all right. And I can't say more than that. I can only tell you that I'm a cardio surgeon. Absolutely. Uh, but I have a, uh, the movie kind of speaks for itself. We built it. And remember I said that it has a lot of educational things in it. Mm-hmm. But how, what, what, what black people actually invented. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's all I can say. Sorry. I got you. I got you. So I know, I know you're saying you can't say much about it. So without being like too specific, does the, does the documentary follow... Uh, a small group of people or or how does it um how so they, is it set up there are different life situations of different people okay. at, at different places okay 
but then they kind of like come together at come together the... without okay. knowing they come together like mm. so different. like crash like the movie crash kind of um yeah like these like cross that. stories that kind of yeah. uh, yeah. intersect right yes exactly like that okay that's okay. cool that's cool Absolutely. I love Crash, by the way. Wow. Yeah, that's one of my favorite movies. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I guess without saying too much, also, what maybe experiences did you pull from having lived in Germany and the U.S. that made it in, that inspired you uh, in this in this documentary? Or, or were there? I would imagine there would be some differences living in Germany and the U.S. and then maybe you could pull from just from. Uh, different perceptions or how you perceived or mm-hmm. so so first in germany i never really except maybe like once so in i never really had problems in germany as much if i would have pro- like as much than here in the united States. i was gonna ask that too. And i never really had like first of all people don't even look at me as they don't consider me black i consider myself black because i am from africa but i'm from the east so People consider that more like we are like the Europeanized bougie that, you know, think that better than everybody else because we have the European futures. I have small nose. I have like the high cheekbones and stuff. You don't, you usually see this only on, on the, in the East of Africa. So people don't look at me like I'm a black, I'm a black. I feel like I am black. So in Germany, people would just call, like, I really did never had like, I had people call me like nigger here or there before, but I never like, I'm so like, okay, whatever. You know, I would just like, I really never really cared. You know what I mean? Cause I think it would upset them more if you just walk away than if you would just talk back. But since I've been here in the United States, so I've been here maybe about 15 years now. And there were situations that, people will look at me like, and they want to say something, but then I give them that look and they'll leave me alone. Um, but I'm, I have more, I'm really more worried about my son than I would worry about myself because it's, it sounds weird, but I can get away with a lot of different exotic, I can, I can be from Brazil, I can be from India, I can be from anywhere. So I can like, I, I wouldn't have as many problems. But this movie, this movie, I was really interested in being part of this movie because there are, I have like friends or I've seen situations where people go through it or you watch movies and you see this and you get angry. You know what I mean? You get, you, you just get angry. Like how do people get away with stuff like this? Or when you see recordings like on Instagram or Facebook, you see this every day, you know what I mean? You get like, how the hell do they get away with this shit? And sometimes I look at these videos and I'm like, and they like, the, like the person records it and the racist is just talking to them and talking to them. If I was in that situation, I don't think I would curse their ass out. Like, I'm not just going to be recording. Like, sometimes I get so angry when I see these recordings. Oh, I've seen some knockout ones. <laughs> but I'd be like, did you guys see that recording? It was just like, I think like a week or two weeks ago and it was in Arizona and it was this black kid, a YouTuber. And this Asian guy came up to him and he said, this is a no nigga zone. Did you guys see that? I, I saw about it. I, I can't watch him at this point. Because, yeah, but yeah. I like the way he reacted because as soon as he like stepped up from him, for himself, the, you know, the guy, he backed up. He was like, okay, I don't want no parts of this. You know what I mean? No That's how I would react the way the kid was reacting. I wouldn't just be like, oh, leave me alone. And, you know, no. I feel like most of the time, <laughs> those... I'm the person, like, I would, I am not taking that shit. It's, it's, it's a thing of, uh, I'm sorry, Marcus, are you saying something? I was going to say, yeah, most like, of the time, the, the harasser is not prepared for a physical alter- like, altercation. Yeah, altercation. <laughs> Absolutely. But, but the other side of it is, is that I, I can't really fault either situation because you, you, your See, question. The problem, uh, yeah, comes, the problem yeah. comes. I see. I see a problem with this, and I, I see where people come from when they don't react the way I would react. It's because I feel like the darker your skin, the more issues you're going to have. Because if the cops pull up, you will be the target. 
not the other person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I a hundred percent agree with that part, but I'm just like, Oh, it just, it makes me so angry when I see this man. Oh, absolutely. And and it's a thing of, (laughs) I I can't ask the question anymore of how do you let this happen? Because regardless of the situation, regardless of evidence, regardless of, uh, whatever the controversy is, like you, uh, much like you just said, and in other cases of light skinned people or et cetera, but uh, the black person gets treated like uh, <laughs> to kind of go back to a car accident. You know how uh, in any kind of car accident, the person the person in by, in the back is the one in the wrong. Any kind of fender bender, regardless of regardless of the person in front was the one that did it. Yeah. If you hit the person then you're the one in the wrong. And yeah, the, the, so the, the situation of being Black in America is, regardless of what the situation was, you can treat it like you were in the wrong. Yeah. Unfortunately. Quite unfortunately. AJ, you back? I don't know. Yes! Yeah. Can you hear me? You can? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I switched computers. No. Okay. Right too close. Is immaculate too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to fill you in on where we are, um, uh, Nautica is brilliantly telling us about her experience in the film, um, some aspects of the character that she's playing, and we're mainly talking about uh, what's the reflection of this work inside of how it is against a real day life and society, and so it morphed into this conversation about being black in America and kind of these dangers that we all face on a daily basis. I had a, uh, a question to kind of bring it back to the documentary a little bit. Um, Cause you, we were kind of talking about diversity and the, um, the different stories that the document documentary tells. Mm-hmm. And you were speaking about how most people don't know or, or, re- understand the the um you know people people who are from east africa since we was we're so used to talking about west africa right so my question is does does the documentary um because you said there's multiple stories does it do a good job of telling the story of of the african-american experience from different perspectives like obviously uh, a female cardio surgeon is is a is a very specific and unique story. So, as far as the other stories, do they do a good job of showing the diversity of the black experience here? You know, going off of the name, I would I would assume that is pretty. It is that. Well, yeah, the documentary is not really about. Um... about like my country or anything like that it has oh no i was yeah i was more so saying like uh, giving that as an example but actually saying like do they do they show many many like views of the african-american experience within absolutely okay absolutely yeah they show um just the different and I know you probably can't say too much. So. Yeah, I, I, I have to be careful <laughs> yeah. what I say because it no, is no, a movie, so I don't want to expose anything. Right, right. We're going to um, you up eventually. We're going to get you to say something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Marvel. Yeah. Okay. No. And, and, if I, uh, and let us know if you're like... But the, hey, reason I, I I brought up, the reason I brought up um, where I'm from is because when I was, when we were shooting, even though it was we were playing, like we were acting, but then at the same time, you think to yourself, wow, this is really happening to people. Like, Mm -hmm. this is really happening to people daily. Like, what would I do if this was an actual situation right now? Mm -hmm. Is you, this this is like, you really, even though I said what I said earlier, but when you actually in that situation in real life, you just like, what am I gonna do? I can't hit this person. I go to jail or I might get shot. I can't do this. I can't do that. So it's, whew, it's difficult, man. 
yeah. you know it's, you know what's really funny is um I don't know if it's really funny actually, but I I, I go back to a, a quote by Nina Simone um, or an interview by Nina Simone where they kept on asking her, what is freedom actually? And she was like, uh, uh, to be without fear. Yeah. And it is, it, it is literally that thing of when you say like, I, uh, I hear you evaluating all the consequences. And one thing that I don't feel happens for uh, those in, in uh, uh, privilege, privilege and power is that a lot of times when this, they get to make rash decisions, because they don't have to think about consequences. Consequences are a little irrelevant. Yet every decision that uh, people who are not inside of those positions of power or privilege usually are going, okay, every choice I make, I need to go, this could happen, this could happen, this could happen. Yeah. I'm making an observation, by all means, y'all could... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I don't miss I think, that's crazy, I think that's the most craziest thing that happened to me. Um, as far as I can look back, is I was driving to the store, right? And this just happened actually like two or three months ago. I was driving to the store and, you know, sometimes you just like cut somebody off, but you really didn't mean to cut them off because you right. know how you drive and then as soon as you want to get into the next lane, the motherfucker next to you wants to just speed up out of speed nowhere. Up. Uh, yes. You know what I mean? So I did that. I went <laughs> over and I showed my <laughs> blinker and Next thing is that person pulls up next to me and it was a red light. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> I look over and there was this old white guy and he looks at me and he does this. I'm like, I'm thinking to my head, like, okay, this motherfucker OD. Like, I Clearly. only cut you off. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I didn't know if this man has a real gun in this car. You know what I mean? I mean, if he already does this. So yeah. I just apologize. I was just like, you know, like hand language. I was like, and then he left me alone. But I did. Was it Clint Eastwood? <laughs> no, I love Eastwood, by the way. He got mm-hmm. I see a situation like this. If I would have started arguing with this man, it, it could have went a totally different way. Yeah. So sometimes it's just good to just be the bigger man and just like, and just keep going by your life. Right. Sometimes just let it go. True. Yeah, Nada, could you say you said something that kind of really piqued my interest? Uh, you're Eritrean. You grew up in Germany, but you said people uh, people tell you that you aren't black. Yeah. What's well, their right. logic? Their logic is stupidity. Well, that obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I've heard all kinds of things. I I even heard some people say, "Well, you pretty for a black girl." That's such a but disrespect to say to somebody. It's, it's in the major disrespect. That, but that, I've uh, heard Indian, I've heard Brazilian, I've heard Spanish, I've heard everything except Black or African. I've even, people even said to me, um, where in Europe is Eritrea? <laughs> that just like, is weird as hell to me. That, Absolutely. If you don't know where Ethiopia is, or at least Eritrea, I mean, Come on, that's like that's probably now, the first thing you should know about Africa. Now, now here, now I will say this: due to my horrible uh, U.S. public education, uh, I I can say I know quite a few. I I grown I grew up knowing quite a few African countries, and I honestly had never heard of Eritrea until like Tiffany Haddish. Well, Eritrea used to be a part of Ethiopia. Gotcha. Okay. And they became independent maybe back in 93 or so. Um, okay. So they are an independent country since then. And and uh, and, and so like Ethiopia, yeah. people should know. They're like, I'm Ethiopian. If you don't know who Ethi- what Ethi- uh, yeah. about Ethiopia, yeah, that's, that's disgraceful. Sometimes when people approach me and ask me where I'm from, and, and I'm just like, you know, I don't feel like explaining this to them right now. I just feel like I'm Ethiopian. <laughs> mm. They'll be like, where? Where? I'm like, Ethiopian. And then I just keep walking. I don't have time. They probably yeah. should know it's one of the the most ancient <laughs> civilizations ever. It really is. <laughs> and and <laughs> ever like it's, it's it makes no sense whatsoever how you could not know what Ethiopia Ethiopia is the original name of Africa. <laughs> so that's all I'm like. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's what I said. They uh, like 
East Africa, like Egypt, Ethiopia, Eritrea, mm-hmm. you know, all of those, they are more Europeanized because of our slim nose and high cheekbones, mm-hmm. big foreheads. I'm hiding my forehead right now because of my hair. <laughs> it's actually like all the way they care. It's like, yo, is that why I got this? Lions, <laughs> lions are people. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All Europeanized, so. Well, and, 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 know, and to be cool. A lot of East Africans, they don't consider themselves black either. And, they and consider themselves East Africans. Which is, which is. That's a whole nother story to go into. That's I'll, a whole nother yeah. story. Yeah. And I, I've had, I've had those conversations with uh, some Egyptians and some Somalis. And, uh, but I, that, that, that amount of. Uh, that that trauma and Stockholm syndrome bullshit. Like I I I don't have the energy or the time to like. That's why I don't even want to get into it because that would be a whole nother conversation. <laughs> so so to to get back on the art tip, um, what got you into acting? I I just think it's just I like I like um, I have so many different. I don't want to say personalities because I don't want you to think I'm a crazy person, but I like to get into act. I like to role play. Okay. And what really, like I've done a short movie before um, when I was in Germany, Mm -hmm. but what really, I stopped. And then what really got me into it is when um, the lockdown started. Okay. I was like, you know what? I want to get back into it. And, um, I started uh, playing around with TikTok. I saw. And, yeah. I got with it. my, it's like, you know how sometimes you do something and then you, you you love something and then your passion just goes away because you get busy with life? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. But it doesn't happen to everyone. It happened to me. Okay. Like you do things and then you just have to stop one thing because you're doing this or that. Mm-hmm. Um, but during the lockdown, I, stop like i unpaused everything and i was like you know what i need to get back into it was this year i was like i need to get back to acting and being silly because i like mm. to be silly i like to yeah get in different characters you know what i mean mm-hmm. that's just it's just the best and you can be anything you want when you act and nobody can judge you for it so that's why i like to act what was your first? That makes, uh, that? I, that that makes, makes a lot of sense. Okay. <laughs> what was your What was your first uh, role? I was a dancer. Okay. Uh, for um, it was basically like a little. It was a German movie. It was kind of like um, these kids that had to track down this drug dealer. Um, hmm. And I was one of the girls that was in a dancing group which one of the boys, his girlfriend was the daughter of the drug dealer. Okay. Yeah. Can you, can you uh, speak German? Yeah. I mean, uh, okay. I, I, I was like, you said you were there for 20 some years. I right. Know. I was, I was, I was assuming. <laughs> I asked that because I, I, you know, if I would have checked the movie out, I probably would, would have a hard time. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. You will have to turn on uh, Google Translate. Get, yeah. get them subtitles going. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, uh, sometimes when I'm out and I hear people speaking German, I just like listen. They don't know <laughs> then what they're talking about. And like, mm-hmm. Right, uh, uh, brute bitter, isn't it like bread, please? I can't hear you. I said brute bitter, isn't it like bread, please? Like more, like like <laughs> bread, please. Wait, say that one more time. I said brute bitter. Fruit bitter? No, brute like bread, bread in German. Oh, brot. Brot. <laughs> bread is brood. Brood. Okay. All yeah. Right. There you go. I'm limited. I'm limited in my in my German. I'm <laughs> got it. You got it. Cool. Your mic might be kind of low, Aaron. Yeah. yeah, your mic does sound a little low. It worked. Uh, it's like my, I'm limited in my German. It's like because you only asking for bread. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't leave, my grandmother only taught me that, and I love you, and like. Oh, is your grandmother German? Yeah, like those, like those two don't. I can't use that in, in conversation. I mean, you can't be like, yo, you got some bread? And then they give you bread and be like, I love you. <laughs> I 
<laughs> or the other way around. I love you then, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that just sounds that just sounds like you're trying to get something out of him. Like you just walk yeah. up the rest of the I love you. <laughs> now give me uh, some bread. <laughs> question for you, Donica. Bert. In regards to your movie choices and stuff. I know you I know we talked about your previous roles you played, but were you what does it take for you to get um, involved in, in a movie? Do you have to hear like a good pitch? Do you have to be moved and inspired the same way you were for, for We Built It? What would inspire me to want to be in a project? Yeah, like do you have to be inspired or moved by the pitch the same way you were for We Built It? Or Yeah, I just don't, like, I don't want to be in a project where I'm just the pretty girl that just, is the pretty girl, mm. if that makes sense. I want to be, like, actually involved. I want to, like, I have, I'm, like, a silly person, but then I also like to be tough. Okay. So if it would be, like, something in that, I would always be interested. But I never want to be, like, just sit there and, like, just look pretty. It's just not what I would be interested in. If right. That's to you. I feel like it's like one dimensional or limited, you know. I know what you Say what? Say you don't want to feel limited or like feel one dimensional. Yeah, well, not limited. It's just like this generation is just different. Gallo? Like, <laughs> yeah. like, okay, let me give you an example. Like, I have a podcast. Like, I'm starting a podcast too. My podcast is called Sugar Honey Iced Tea. It's called sugar honey iced tea because if you take each letter of the word at the end, it means shit. Right? <laughs> and my, my podcast, I don't like to just like interview people or just talk about regular things. I like to, when I have guests on my show, I like mm-hmm. to not tell you what I'm going to ask you, but I will give you a heads up and I will tell you, hey, I'm going to be asking you random questions and it's going to be, some questions might be very explicit. Are you okay with that? And then when they come on my show, I'll ask you some crazy weird ass questions that people regularly do not ask you. And see, the reason I want to do that is because I don't want to have, I don't want to sit in the chair and just be another, hey, this is another pretty girl that has a podcast that asks. Sorry. Like, I mean, I just had interviews. People are probably not going to be as interested in watching it versus the the questions. And I'm going to email you guys one of my, I haven't posted anything yet because I'm not 100% satisfied with what I have recorded so far. Mm-hmm. But if you look at it, you'll see it's actually unique because you're not going to just see my face. You're going to hear what I'm saying. And that's what I mean when I say, like, if I was in a movie, I don't want people to just look at me and be like, oh, there's a pretty girl. And and then that's and then they're going to put me to the side. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because yeah. this generation is all about pretty, having a big booty, having a size zero waist. I mean, yo, that second one is kind of important. Though. That second I one. Mean, <laughs> it's, a beautiful thing. it's a beautiful thing. But then at the same time. You want to be a little bit more than just that. You want you want to have depth, and yeah, so I, want, I, I completely get that. I want to and, see people to see my talent, not like, oh, look at her. Mm-hmm. And I think people I, last longer that way anyway. Like exactly. it's not it's built on something that that's you know beyond physical or whatever. Yeah, that's a lot, Adam, that's I saw you shaking your head. What's up? Hey, what? I saw you shaking your head. What's up? What you got to say? Ooh, she called you out. <laughs> I agree. I'm, I'm sorry, I agree. I agree. I don't. I don't disagree. Okay. Good. Hey, uh, you can disagree. You can disagree. You can. Oh, that's you disagree. Anybody can disagree. Or, or you know, it doesn't matter. No, no, no. I, I feel you. I, I don't think that's. I, I'll say I don't. Uh, the only pushback I'll give is that I don't think that's exclusive to this generation. Uh, mm-hmm. I think. Uh, people being, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? P- people wrapping themselves up in the like the vapid or the shallow uh, realms of attractivity mm-hmm. has always been a thing. Uh, I was just watching um, 
of forgive me, I can't remember her name, but the woman the woman who sang uh uh what was that disco song? Uh that um uh the woman was uh, on a friend. <laughs> No, it, it it was it was a really famous uh, like dance track in the '90s. It wasn't even like disco. It was like a old '90s house, mm-hmm. but um, her voice got used for like three really big hits. It, it bothers me. I can't remember exactly what it was, but they got a model to lip sync over her so that they could promote the song because she um, was a uh, she was a big black girl. And oh, were, I know, I know. I forgot her name, but I know what song you're talking about. I know yeah, what you're talking it, about. Yeah, it 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 is it it bothers me. I I hate that I'm bad about this, but uh, but it is that it is that thing that's kind of always been the case of people will take pretty over uh people will act like uh the industry acts like pretty over talent. Mm-hmm. And what's really been really great about this uh generation in this era is uh, uh Zelma Davis is her name. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Zel- uh, Zelma Davis, uh, 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 yes, was the singer. Now, what's the song uh, that you? Re- every everybody dance now. That's the song. Oh, okay. everybody okay. dance now. Yeah. So the woman, the woman that's in the music videos or pr- performing the song is not the woman that's actually singing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that there's countless examples of situations like that. Thank you, baby. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so. This generation has been is a little better because people are in charge of their own content. Yeah. Now there are people who want to push themselves forward as, "Hey, I'm pretty and I do these things with dicks. Pay attention to me." And so <laughs> that's cool. But there's uh there's all these other women out here who are you know having crime uh crime solving podcasts or making great music or whatnot, and your looks. Can but don't completely have to matter. I love your idea of random questions, though. If you if you if right you throw one at us, please. Right now, sure. Or if you, if one comes to you in the midst of the conversation, we got we still got okay. a little bit of time left. Yeah, but you, you me off guard. Don't do no, that. no, no. My my bad, my bad. I didn't mean to put you on the spot like that. <laughs> you choking like? Because <laughs> uh, no, nah, because this is that podcast that we do that too. We have talked about everything from. We constantly talk about music and hip hop. We talk uh what what's this old shit we would say? Um we talked about porn porn and suicide more times than <laughs> you probably should have. <laughs> so uh, suicide, wow, yeah. <laughs> you're like this, whoa, that's yeah, it's it's the gambit. <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah. Okay, okay. I got a uh question. Um Go what, ahead, what type of role would you like to to be like what's what's your i know you said you were like kind of you like goofy funny stuff would you do a comedy like what's your what's one of the roles that you may have not done yet that you would like to do so i'm not a comedian but i can be funny um but i would love to do a gangster role Mm, okay i could see that yeah yeah (laughs) have you have you guys seen the queen of the south I saw. One. No, I, I, I no, want to be a Teresa Mendoza. All right, all right. <laughs> I okay. love that show. Yeah, yeah. I want. I want to be. Uh, I want to have a gangster role, but I, I want to be that. I want to be that. That. that is hot. <laughs> now, what, what level again? What level of gangster are we talking about? We talking about like you. Uh, you she said, about. "Boss bitch." So you got. Of be. course, being a boss. <laughs> I want to be mean, like Teresa Mendoza, but more like a Nino Brown. Okay. Okay. Like the straight up ass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that. Mm. I love what, that. what what about what about that uh that build of character is so um attractive to you? You can just let your anger out. Not saying that I have anger in me, but you can just be. I think everybody wants to would love to play a gangster role. I agree. You know what I mean? You see Denzel Washington in American Gangster mm-hmm. when he was sitting on the table when they mm-hmm. had breakfast and he walks yeah. out, walks up to Idris Elba. That's yeah. hard. You should redo that, bro. You should redo that on TikTok. Yeah, I, I, would, I would love that. Like, seriously, that role is hard. That, that scene is so hard. Like, I would mm. love to just be that tough role. 
Have you seen I, um, The Wire? I've seen The Wire, yeah. So there's a character in there where I think she comes in maybe season like three, but apparently she's, she's essentially she's like the, the muscle, I guess you could say, for uh, Avon or was it the other dude? I forgot which, which guy it was, but she's like, she's uh, light skin, has braids. I don't know if you remember or not, but. The lesbian girl? Yeah. I can't remember if it's been so long. Okay, yeah. I I see, I only just came on the scene. Well, I only just recently, when I recently, like a year, watched The Wire like a year ago versus like 20 years when it came out. But um, that's why it's fresh in my mind. But Wait, that's like, that wasn't 20 that's years ago. Maybe, maybe but, 10. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe Wire? like 10 years. Uh, because I was, I was already here. I was already here in, in the United States. So maybe 15. <laughs> okay. Yeah, fifteen. Okay, yeah, fifteen. That's part of that. But no, that, that, that's who I thought of when you said a gangster role because she's like she's probably one of the that's probably one of the most gangster women roles I've seen because she's actually apparently she's actually from the streets. So they they casted a lot of like mm-hmm. people that that are actually like in that live show, which is pretty cool. But yeah, hmm. I think she isn't she from Chicago. I think, I think she is. I, I, hmm. I, that I don't know, but yeah. I I know she's like, you know, it's it's about that life for yeah. real. So. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, I had a question that's gone. My bad. <laughs> um, I'm not about that life. Yeah, but, but, but you I, think you I play would about that love life. to play that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I assumed as much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You you could you could very much be a part of the German mafia, you know, you like you, you was that you was that quiet muscle. Yeah, don't push me. <laughs> <laughs> yo, going around just yo d- demanding bread and <laughs> That's all you know. <laughs> what? No, no. No, 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 no. I'm not in a no German mafia. <laughs> I would um, I, I would like to play that role though. Okay. I feel like it would be very freeing. Just because of like it's it is considered taboo in a way in society now, you know, mm-hmm. like you can't, you can't really let yourself go in that way. I mean, just for the same reason. Of, let's say you're in a store, and you see folks like what is considered like wilding out, like getting angry or an argument or fighting. It's not mm-hmm. seen as good or pleasant. It's not it's not really accepted in a way without without judgment. So to just to to like explore that side of yourself. Yeah. Feeling judged and really letting go, I think, would be free. Yeah. It's like going boxing. You go boxing, you can just let it all out, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's really the same thing to me. It's just like you're watching all these movies and you, you, you see things that are going on in the world and you just like, let me play that out. I can get that. I think, I think, uh, it, it really makes me ask the question of uh, if I was if I was to play a gangster in some capacity, I'm pretty sure I would rather be. I, I'm like you. I would rather be an asshole, um, but I'm I'm a, I would rather be a different kind of asshole. Like I love Gus Fring and Breaking Bad. Uh, uh, I never saw that. You never saw Breaking Bad. I never Bad? watched it. No, I. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to watch, uh, but I never had like. I, I didn't. I just didn't get to it yet. That's oh crazy. yeah, I like I like how he plays a bad guy too. Yeah. Uh, um. Uh. M- Mr. Esposito. Uh. <laughs> he, that dude, man. He's I, fucking ridiculous. Yeah. I wish I could write just so I could write a script for him. <laughs> like. Just, I'm gonna watch script. that. I'm gonna watch it. He's he's a ama- He's he's literally the best villain in that show, and one of my favorite villains of all time. Mm-hmm. Especially because he, you don't really he's, recognize him as a villain. Besides Mr. White. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I. Hey, I don't know. I I I never rode for Walter like that. <laughs> <laughs> it just was I just didn't. Uh, but I don't know. I usually have issues with uh, when 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 the script tries to tell me to try to make me care about a character, I have to do the opposite. Mm-hmm. Did you guys <laughs> see the snowball? Snowfall. I started. I, it's, no, it's, it's snowball. 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 
Yeah. I only yeah. saw one episode, but um that's good. that was pretty good too. Cause that's um yeah. uh uh bro- brother that made don't be a menace made snowfall, right? Why can't I think of his name? I'm not sure. Uh, what did you say? You had to be breaking up. I could be wrong. I think I think it was John Singleton or John, John Singleton. Singleton. Yeah. 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 John Singleton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he's also like you know he's like from the poor family and he turned into this big Aloha drug dealer. Mm. He has this cop working with him and people like trying to get rid of him and stuff like that. That's just. That's real life things for people every day. Right. You know what I mean? And this is just so interesting to me. I it's it's in my queue. It's one uh I've I it's it's in my queue. It definitely is in my queue. And especially because I believe that's the last like major project that John Singleton made before he transitioned. And so um could be yeah. Yes. Yeah, still, still still the show is still going on when he died. When he died, Obviously. oh okay. Aaron, did you say something? I had no idea that he passed. How long ago was that? Yeah. Like two years, it was like two, three years ago. Yeah. He got some classics under his belt. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. a lot of classics. Yeah, that he does. Great <laughs> Word. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap up, y'all. I appreciate you so much, Nautica, for Thank joining you us for today. Me, guys. You are you are a joy and a pleasure. Uh, we built this coming to you in february um uh the the original premiere for the uh for the cast and media is going to be you said at the harper theater for the cast yes we'll be at the harper theater um in november next month well, november the- i'm sorry yeah but for for public view it will be in february yes and it will be at the harper theater in high park okay wonderful Ooh. coming to you in chicago yeah. but i'm sure it's going to be available in more places I want to thank Nautica Taylor for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Thank you. So it's, the, it's just the beginning. I, we, we would love to have you back on anytime Absolutely. you want to. Uh, you ain't even got to be promoting nothing. Just be like, hey, I feel like talking. And <laughs> I love that. You yeah. in there. Okay. <laughs> Questions. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, uh, everybody else out there, if you want to follow, uh, if you want to follow Nautica Taylor, then we're gonna make sure that uh, it's on the video. But Nautica, please tell us where we can find you. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram under Nautica underscore Taylor, or you can find me on uh, Facebook under Nautica Taylor also. All right, don't forget them TikToks, right? TikTok, she's doing- <laughs> absolutely, the real Nautica Taylor. I'm waiting to see that. The, the real I'm waiting Nautica to see that Taylor. American Gangsta scene. Yeah, I'm gonna be looking out for that. I'm gonna look, um, yeah. Actually, Ike Turner and uh, Kina Turner is my next little video that I'll Yes. Nice. Love it. Love it. Uh, we are four brothers uh, who pride ourselves on having ample and, in this case, interviewing conversations. Yay. Uh, rooted in being forthright, vulnerable, and most of all, honest. You can check us out on Informally Honest uh, podcast on Facebook and Informally Honest on IG. We love y'all. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, Thank peace. you so much. Bye. For sure. Yes. Mm-hmm. Peace, King. You ain't heard that the word black is beautiful to me. We think that we are less, but we still blessed regardless of all this stress. All this stress is all I test.